One of the main themes of Fall Guys is that you're bound to mess up once in a while and fall, but it's okay if you can get back up and keep moving forward. But is it possible to win a match without falling whatsoever? For the first time since 9 months ago, I'm returning to this game and winning a match without falling. Before we begin, we need to define what exactly falling is in this game. And my definition has two parts, falling over unintentionally, where my chest, sides, or back hit the ground, and falling off the level, which forces me to respawn. However, if I dive and land on my chest, I don't consider it a fall because it's intentional. And with that out of the way, let's get started. My first round was Hit Parade, one of the classics from Season 1, but it was different from how I remembered it, because as you can see, some of the obstacles were changed. For the first part of the level, if you try to stay on top and don't make it all the way, you'll fall over when you hit the bottom part. So the fastest and safest way to get through here is to slow down a little and drop on the highest part of the decline. This prevents me from falling over, and it's actually faster than taking the top. This next part was easy in the first version of Hit Parade, but this new obstacle complicates things. If I get hit by even one of these, or someone else flies into me after getting hit by one, it's almost guaranteed to knock me over and end my run. So my initial approach was to time my jumps and match the speed of the spinning obstacles. However, I realized that everyone else was catching up to me, and decided to slow down so they wouldn't interfere with my jumps. When I decided to move again, someone flew at me and pushed me into the obstacle, but I bounced off of it perfectly and kept my balance. And then, more people started flying at me. One narrowly missed me from the right, then two flew at me from the left and put me in a sort of sandwich. This did knock me off balance for a second, but since I was blocked off from both sides, it slowed my fall and gave me just barely enough time to push off with my arms before my chest hit the ground. I know some of you might think I fell here, so I'm going to replay this in slow motion just so we're clear. Take a look at my position in these frames. My back arches upwards, which signifies that I start to regain my balance before my body touches the ground. This is probably the closest call I've ever had in a challenge video, but I actually managed to stay up right here. After that, I made it through the next section without too much trouble. The final obstacle in this map was also changed, and it forces me to move left and right as I traverse up the hill. The key is to pass these on the correct side so the spinners are spinning with you instead of against you. So after taking a moment to calculate where I wanted to go, I started to execute my plan. But I lost control when I got knocked around by other people, which hit me into two of the spinners and actually launched me exactly where I needed to be. I had to swerve right to regain my balance, then left to avoid the upcoming spinner, then right again to avoid hitting the wall. And all of this effort just got me past round 1. For round 2, I got perfect match. And when I got perfect match in my last challenge video, I basically skipped it, because it was so boring and uneventful. But when the round started and I was checking my phone, I noticed that something was different. Wait a minute, why is fruit getting launched at us? As I was trying to figure out where the fruit was coming from, I almost forgot that I needed to move to a different platform. Once I took care of that, I still hadn't found the source of the fruit, so when I heard it getting launched again, I moved to the corner and narrowly avoided it. It was at this moment that I realized the fruit was coming from behind me, so I moved to the other side and put myself in a position where I could react to it. However, I once again forgot to memorize the platforms. I moved to a platform that had a few other guys on it, and I trusted trusted them until I realized there were more people on the platform to my left. I made a split second decision to join the larger group, and everyone else jumped with me. Some of them were probably trying to trick people into staying on the wrong platform. After that, I was able to keep track of the platforms and the fruit cannons, so I qualified after a surprisingly eventful perfect match. Round 3 is where the exception to the falling off the map rule comes into play, so I'll go ahead and explain that now. In Ski Fall, the objective is to jump through hoops until you get to the end, where you're supposed to jump through one of these hoops and respawn. Since falling through this gold hoop at the end is where you're actually supposed to go, I've decided that if I fall through this gold hoop, it shouldn't break the rules of the challenge since the level is designed for me to go there. With that being said, there's still a lot of ways to mess up here. If I miss a hoop and hit the blue wall, get knocked over by the yellow bumpers, or get launched by these green spring pads, all of these could end my run. When I started down the slope, I realized that I was going to hit the blue wall with my current trajectory, so I started running backwards against an avalanche of players who were respawning. 
Once they passed me, I jumped through the first hoop and had to jump again to avoid the spring pad. I ran backwards again to slow down, and as I made it through the next hoop, I realized I had to dive to avoid the bumper. This left me just short of a spring pad, but I managed to hit the gold ring in the middle. I slowed down again before reaching the next hoop, and when someone almost pushed me off, I had to jump and dive to keep myself from sliding off. This happened again on the next ring, and I had to respond in the same way. On my way to the final jump, I realized that if I dove too early, I would have been hit by the pendulum to my left, so I had to delay my dive to the point where I just barely made it through the final ring. And with that, I cleared one of the most difficult courses to beat in this challenge. Round 4 was Big Shots, one of the new levels in Season 4. It's pretty simple, just dodge the incoming projectiles, especially when these planet-looking things get shot out because they cover a large area which means they're the hardest to avoid. Dodging the projectiles was pretty easy, so if I were the developers, I would lower the platform so people have to focus more on keeping it out of the slime, and stay more towards the middle where the projectiles are. Despite this, people were getting eliminated much quicker than I expected, but everything was going swimmingly until my side of the platform started to dip into the slime. This could have been bad, but the other people adjusted for me and leveled out the platform. So besides that, I qualified without much of a problem. I expected round 5 to be the final round, but it was actually a team minigame called Penguin Pursuit. This was actually my first time ever playing the level, so it's cool that I made it work in the successful attempt. I started the match by looking for a penguin like everyone else, but when I found one and started chasing it, the fan blew it up to the ledge on the outside. Here's the problem, the fans could blow me up into the air high enough for me to lose my balance when I hit the ground. In addition, they lead directly into these red punchers, which would definitely knock me over. As I noticed we were tied with blue team, I found a penguin, and somehow I managed to push this guy away at the same time that I was picking it up. I only carried it for a few seconds, which may not seem significant at first glance, but this actually had a drastic impact on the rest of the round, because now Blue was in last place, and we could team up with Yellow Team to screw over Blue Team. That's how most of these team games work, where first and second place team up to make sure the third place can't make a comeback. So I focused my efforts on sabotaging Blue Team instead of helping my team. Blue Team fell even farther behind over time, so that one time I grabbed the Penguin for a couple seconds made all the difference. Otherwise, Yellow Team and Blue Team might have teamed up on us. Before the final round, I want to show you some bloopers from my failed attempts. I had some really bad luck on Dizzy Heights where these cannons just wouldn't give me a break. After all my talk about how easy Big Shots was, I not only fell over one time, but actually got eliminated because I slid down the platform when it was in balance. To be fair, that watermelon didn't really give me anywhere to go. And finally, here is one of my most miraculous saves ever. I got hit by the snowball in the middle of my jump, bonked my head on the fan, flipped over, and landed on my feet with my chest hanging over the edge. Technically, this doesn't violate the rules since my chest, sides, and back don't touch the ground. I was very excited to have this in my successful attempt until I got eliminated in Jump Club the next round. Alright, it's time for the final round, and once again, it's Hexagon. This level always comes through for me whenever I'm trying to beat a challenge. The only problem is that I can't fall down more than one floor at a time. If I do, I could fall over from the impact when I land. I had a pretty bumpy start at the beginning, but what's great about this level is that nothing you do really matters until the end game. I fell through the first three floors rather quickly, until I finally got the fourth floor to myself. I had so many tiles to stall with here, but I really fumbled the bag by jumping to the wrong area. There weren't many tiles from the lower floor left either, but I managed to find one just in time. I started to engage with this red guy, but despite being ahead of them, I mistimed my jump input after diving and had to descend another floor. I regained some footing on the second to last floor and decided to try and carve out an area so no one else could mess with me. This worked really well at first, against the other people who were on the same floor, but this monkey guy jumped here from the floor above me and totally screwed me over, so I was down to the final floor. I wanted to stall for time, but I immediately had to speed up and engage with someone. They somehow managed to stay alive despite my attempts to cut them off, and we met up with the other remaining player. Then the other guy started falling 
following me, and I just had to deal with it for a while. Eventually, I was able to cut him off because he started diving too much. After this, there were very few tiles left, but I managed to dive over to the other side. Then, I once again mistimed my jump while I was still recovering from a dive, and fell through the tile, but the other guy had fallen right before me, and with that, I finally won a match without falling. Thanks for watching. I'm excited to start putting out content again, and if you're here right now, you're about to witness one of the greatest comeback stories in YouTube history. I'll see you in the next video.